Welcome back. Part three. I missed you. It's really good to see you again. You look great. So in this part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a tour of my machine mapping, which I'm then going to give you for free like a fool. I'm going to do that. Let's, let's have a look at this machine here. Um, so this is sort of like my basic setting. Let's look at the main pad first. So my default setting here is that my cue points, my loop on and off, and my sync are controlled on each deck on the main page here. So this is cue point one, cue point two, cue point three, four, five, six. That's for the left deck, deck A. And then for the right deck, I go a little unorthodox. I go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then what I have is loop active on and off for the left deck. Notice there's an LED uh, happening here, even if I went on the program and did that. Same thing for deck B, loop on and off, and then I have sync on and off here. So I hit, I hit it once, it's on, I hit it again, it's off, and we have the visual display as well. So we have my cue points, loop on and off, sync on and off, so on and so forth. To the left here, we also we have browse, brings us up and down, and notice there will be a little flickering of the light. Not sure how I did this exactly, but you can look at the mapping, it's quite nice, I think. Then to load in a track, it's these left and right arrows, so to load in a song into the left deck. It's the left arrow to load in the same, a track into the right deck. I also have my key lock on and off, uh, where we have visual display as well. So restart is for deck A, key lock on and off. Um, and then down here I have record, that's load next in playlist. So if I'm playing this and then I load in something else, it'll automatically load in the next track. So record is to load the next song in the playlist to the left deck, erase to the right deck. All pretty straightforward. The mute button here, if I hold it, it's just like in part two. Hitting it and a cue point will delete the cue point. Um, also sort of on my main page here, I have my effects on top. As you'd expect, the knobs control the knobs and actually on the screen itself, you'll notice with the effects here, I have all uh, these different uh, bars um, and you can actually change what's displayed here. If I hold shift uh, down at the bottom, you see that we hear show bars and uh, one option is values. So if you had values, it would look like this, a bunch of numbers. And as we all know, numbers suck. It's all about bars, you know what I mean? Uh, so we have the bars, and then we have a nice visual display here uh, of our effects. Also on top here, uh, you know, turning the effects on and off, as, as you'd expect. So the effects are up here on top. As far as enabling the effects panels, that's over here. So pretty much turning on effects panel one for deck A is this, turning it off. We have the LED display as well. So effects panel one and two for deck A, that's these two. So if I had this track on. Same, same thing over here, this is for deck B, effects panel one and two. So I hit this, it'll turn on. Effects panel two over here. And then I actually have for decks C and D, the same thing, effects panel one. Effects panel two, effects panel one, effects panel two, and we can see on the screen that when I press that, that these are indeed engaged. Now, those are sort of the basic functions. Um, I'm someone who, as you saw in part one, uh, I like to sometimes use all eight cue points at my disposal. So if I hit the pattern button, this will now switch to rather than these two buttons being loop on and off in sync, I'll now have all eight cue points available and the LEDs uh, will change as well. Now, also, this is this I'm particularly proud of. If I hit pad mode, this now changes to controlling my samples. So not only will the buttons change, but the LEDs will change. So if I launch, it'll play. I also have it so that when there's sound playing, you'll see a light next to the button. So here we have uh, sample one, two, three, and four, and these buttons will both trigger and play. And the button to the right of it will just be a trigger and then for deck D. I'm the best ever. I'm, I'm, I'm the best ever. Same, same kind of thing. One, two, three, four for deck C. One, two, three, four for deck B. Uh, we can delete samples by holding mute 
and then hitting one of these buttons. Uh, we can actually change the mode by holding scene. And I believe it's, nope, that mutes it. Yeah, so if we hold scene and hit the button to the left, that will mute and unmute. So if you're working with loops, that's very useful to have. And if we hit the button that's lit up, that'll change the mode. So let's change the mode again. And there, and there you have it. I switch, I go back to pad mode. I, I disengage the pad mode and boom, I'm back to sort of my normal uh, main page. There are some other little uh, hidden nuggets uh, over here. I'll leave it to you to find what those are, but these are sort of the basic functions here uh, as far as my machine mapping goes. I personally think this is more exciting than an episode of MTV Cribs. Uh, you didn't get to see my bedroom uh, or you know my cars or anything, but you got to see my sample pads. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.